Hey, we back. I'm here talking about Overbot today because I realised recently I have complained a little bit uh, in Discord about Overbot. Uh, this is something I do reasonably often anyway, uh, but particularly recently. And um, I've been complaining about Overbot because of its balance. It's got quite a few problems with balance. Um, I think many people that use the bot often are aware of this. Um, and I think this is the reason why I've been talking about not bot a lot on the channel recently. Uh, because while maybe it's not balanced, it is at least better in terms of balance than Overbot. But what I thought is we would turn this into a video, because why not? Um, and then maybe you guys can start uh, noticing a little more about uh, the problems with Overbot um, and how to abuse them, potentially. Um, the reasons why Hunt is so good, for example, that's what we're going to start with. Uh, so I've said in many of my videos before that hunting is the best way to make money. Uh, o -O -H. It is a very strong command, as it happens, um, and there are some reasons for that. It is not uh, completely random. Um, I mean, obviously, it is an excellent way to make money anyway. It always has been. Uh, but the reason for that is gems. Gems here, kind of OP, as it happens. Um, so, uh, let me compare from before gems existed, just so you get a bit of uh, perspective here. Before gems existed, um, hunting uh, would cost five and give you one animal. This is the same as it is now if you're not using gems. I'm sure you're aware hunting does cost you five money. Without gems or before gems, it would get you one animal. Now, we've talked a lot uh, on the channel before about the average value of an animal. Uh, I will tell you now it is above five. Well, we can do the maths. So, you probably remember this chart. Uh, this shows the amount of money that you get and the percentage chances for each rarity of animal. Now, if you exclude gem animals, because this is without gems, uh, you exclude Patreon because it's not really fair to include them, we'll exclude bot distorted and special because they have special cases for getting them just the normal animals that you can get via hunting the average animal is giving you about 21 currency that is already four times more than you spent to get it of course this relies on things like legendaries and mythics dropping sometimes because they're pretty rare but yes it's four times your profit. That's without gems. You're already making a lot of money. However, with the introduction of gems, I do one hunt, it costs me five, and then I get, on average with these 20 animals, a worth of 400 currency every 15 seconds. 400 may not sound like a lot, but trust me, that adds up. Uh, and this is why hunting is so good. Now, this has another effect as well, because if getting animals is easy, what else can you get? You can get your hunt bot easily, because you don't have to sell those animals. You can also sacrifice those animals to level up your hunt bot a lot quicker. Now, I'm not going to do the maths on this one, because it's going to be a lot more complicated. Um, but I will say uh, that when it was a lot harder to get animals, uh, things like gain were a lot better. Um, and leveling up your hunt bot in general was a lot harder. This cost um, upgrade was also a lot better. Um, but as soon as getting essence became very easy, the cost upgrade became almost trivial to unlock. And then everyone starts going straight for the efficiency duration combo because gain isn't even that good anymore. I mean, gain is still worth having, absolutely. You should still upgrade gain, but it's almost overkill at this point. Leveling up your hunt bot became a lot easier. You can quite easily max out your hunt bot in, I would say, a year without even hunting. That's impressive. And so, as soon as you add in the manual hunts, it's going to be so fast. I would say probably a couple of months if you do enough hunting. It shouldn't be... Uh, two out of your reach. That difference is pretty huge. That's six times faster with the introduction of the manual hunting. And that is indirectly caused by the gems being really good. Now there's another thing here, because if we all have loads of money from our 
gems and our hunting, which we do by the way, we have a lot of money, I have a lot of money, you may think I have a lot of money, and to be honest I do have a lot of money, but trust me, you have a lot of money as well. You might be sitting looking at your currency levels and going, oh well, I've only got 30,000, but 30,000 is a lot. I have a maxed hunt bot, and it doesn't cost me even 30,000 to set it off. You don't even need more than 30,000, ever. 30,000 is the maximum that you're going to need to do anything in a robot other than buy rings and stuff, which is all just uh, cosmetic anyway. Having this amount of money makes a lot of things kind of redundant. I already talked about the hunt cost, but there used to be other costs in the game. For example, the battles used to cost five. They don't seem to cost five anymore, but did you even notice? Probably not, because it doesn't make any difference. Saying, oh well, like this, I've said in past videos, gives you two currency. And that used to be true, but that was actually removed as well. Again, did you notice? Probably not, because it doesn't really make any difference. Another thing that has changed by the effect of having a lot of money in general is the gambling limit. If you have a look at your coin flip, coin flip all, as you might imagine, is meant to be putting all of your currency into the coin flip. But as you can see, it does not put all of my currency into the coin flip. It puts 50,000 into the coin flip. 50,000 is actually not that much money either. I'm sure most of the people watching this video have done a coin flip of 50,000 before. Don't you think that's kind of weird? If you think you're poor, how come you can afford the maximum amount? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Realistically, that max cap should be increased, because 50,000 isn't a lot of money anymore. I'll tell you now, it's been capped at 50,000 for almost four years, and doesn't seem like they're going to change it anytime soon. But back four years ago, 50,000 was a lot of money, and hitting that amount was really difficult, whereas now it doesn't really mean anything, does it? In a similar vein, there's the daily cap and the voting amount. Daily cap has actually been increased recently. I can't show you my daily, obviously, because I've collected it already today. But the daily cap used to be 1,000 currency, and if you're not aware, it is now 5,000 currency. That is a pretty nice change, because 1,000 currency is useless. But guess what? 5,000 currency is also pretty useless. It's certainly worth having, a lot more than 1,000 is, but it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference to anyone, does it? I think that it should be increased a little bit more, perhaps, but that's just me, I suppose. The same applies to your voting. Your voting starts out at only giving you a couple of hundred. Now, admittedly, voting actually doesn't have a cap. You can see my voting here, for example, is at over 3,000, which is actually not as much as the new daily amount, but is still a reasonable amount. But in order to get that amount, I have been voting for a long time. Your vote is probably only worth a few hundred, and that's going to put you off voting, or at least it would put me off voting if mine was only worth a few hundred, because a few hundred isn't really worth having either. I think both the daily and the voting rewards should be increased a fair bit. The loot boxes and weapon crates are nice, but the currency amounts isn't relative to the amount of money that people have nowadays. Money, however, is not just broken by the amount that people have, because it is also broken by tickets. If you weren't aware, tickets are a thing that you can have. A lot of people are after tickets, and you can buy them in many places, including the Oro official server. Their prices have been going up a lot recently, because they're still in demand. As you can see, people here buying for 1.7 or 1.8 million. That's a lot of money. Tickets are basically a way to get Patreon, uh, which is pretty good in the sense that now you can get Patreon without having to pay for it with real money, you can pay for it with Owo money instead. That's pretty nice, but the issue is what you can do with this feature, which is buy a lot of tickets for real money and then sell them for Owo money. This is going to get you a huge amount of OWO money, and each ticket only costs about $1. So if you're paying $1 and getting $1.8 million back from it, well, let's suppose you spent $10. It's not a huge amount, 
now all of a sudden you've got almost 20 million. That is a pretty large amount. And you can see how all you'd need to do is spend, I don't know, $100 and you are top of the leaderboard on currency. And yeah, I don't want to spend $100 on OO and I'm sure you don't either. But trust me, there's some people out there that do and then they get top of the leaderboard. This has ruined the OO leaderboard amounts by a lot because all of the people at the top now are people that buy tickets. Well, I say all, that's not really fair. There's plenty of people up there that don't. And I, I shouldn't really group them all together like that. But there is certainly a lot of people at the top of the leaderboard that have been buying tickets. And tickets have carried a lot of people up there. This is what we call pay to win. And it's not very good. Admittedly, the currency leaderboard is not normally the one that people focus on. I think the streak leaderboard is probably a lot more impressive to most people and other leaderboards potentially. But there's no denying that the currency leaderboard is a big target for many people. And if you can buy your way to the top, that's not the best. We can also extrapolate this to a lot of other leaderboards. For example, the cookie leaderboard. If you're not aware, you can buy cookies off people. This is just a, an agreement that people will have where maybe I will pay you 20,000 currency to give me a cookie every day. Seems like a reasonable deal for both parties. One person gets a lot of cookies for the cookie leaderboard, the other person gets a reasonable cash flow income. Nice. But if you buy tickets, suddenly you have loads of money, you can pay loads of people loads of money to get loads of cookies, and now you're at the top of the cookie leaderboard. The same can be done with luck, with curses, and even with the OWO collectibles as well, although they don't have leaderboards. This kind of makes quite a few of the leaderboards potentially pay to win as much as its secondary effect of currency rather than directly, and I doubt they've been affected nearly as much, it's certainly something to be aware of. Moving away from money a little bit, because I've talked about it a bit much, I think, we're going to talk about weapons. So, first of all, we've got our weapon shop reselling thing. I talked about this in a video quite recently, uh, where you can go onto the uh, OO shop for your weapons, you can check, ooh, is this going to be worth buying, and I think in this case it is, so we have a great example straight away. I'm going to buy this weapon as a demonstration. Here we go, buy 101, that cost me 63 shards. I'm now going to re-roll that weapon by passive. I get a mythic, that cost me 100 shards, and now I'm going to go ahead dismantle this weapon, which gives me 300 shards. So I just gained 137 shards for nothing. This is something you can do a lot of days simply by checking the shop. And yes, while you do need to be bothered to check the shop, and it is a bit of an incentive, so it's not inherently bad, I don't really complain about this one particularly. And you need to make sure that you're actually checking the percentage that the weapon can get to, so it's a little bit of effort by the way, made a spreadsheet for that, got a video about it. But it is a bit random that you can gamble weapon shards in such a biased way like this. I'm not really sure this should exist, and I think perhaps the shop prices should be changed so that they actually represent how good the weapon is, rather than simply the quality. I do realise, of course, that that's very difficult to do, and personally I don't know how I would do it, so it's uh, debatable how realistic that goal actually is, but again, it's something to note. Again, speaking about weapons, I'm sure you all know about your teams, what teams are good. I have my team here, which is my eagle, frog and boar, which is not a great team, and I've got my bow at the top, which is not a great weapon. Um, if you're looking for the top meta teams, then you probably want vampire staff or... Uh, poison dagger, maybe energy staff if you're feeling a bit frisky. Um, you also have your other teams like your blitz and all the rest of it. There's quite a few different types of teams, but it is quite obvious that they normally follow very similar rules. If nothing else, all of the meta teams are going to include a spirit staff and a shield. Healing staff is just worse than spirit staff in almost 
all situations. And equally, a lot of weapons are kind of redundant. If we have a look in the shop. The banner, for example, which is giving you attack off buffs. This is used in some teams, but I don't think anyone would say that it is used in the best teams. I don't think anyone would say that this has much of a chance of getting on the streak leaderboard, for example, because it's not as good streak-wise as things like Vampire Staff. While it can certainly beat those teams if it's set up correctly, when it comes to building a streak and getting on the leaderboard, this weapon is kind of redundant. Does that mean the weapon needs a buff? Not necessarily. Maybe it means that we need a change to the way that the streak works, or the streak leaderboard works. Maybe it does mean the net weapon needs a buff. Maybe it means another weapon needs a nerf. There's a lot of ways to fix this. You could even contemplate adding a fourth member to your team, which would enable things like this to get used in a lot more synergized ways. I won't claim to know how to change a Huo's balance though, because I know that'll probably get a lot of people complaining. I'm just here trying to say what I think is not currently balanced and needs having a look at. I think this is probably one of them, and Banner is one of many weapons which suffer from this at the moment, in that they're not that great. The last thing on my list is, I think, the most obvious one, which is that there's a lot of people on Orobot that are cheating. I think most people are aware of that, and there's not much really you can do about it. Um, this can vary from people using bots, people using alt accounts, and simply people just breaking the TOS in terms of trading. There's a lot of things that people do that are against the rules, and it kind of ruins the experience a bit. This is a very difficult problem to fix, and Orobo obviously already has its anti-cheat, which is apparently not doing enough for it. But some things could be easily fixed. For example, the report system. The report system at the moment on Orobot is broken. You can try it out if you like. They have a bot on Orobot Official. You can supposedly DM it to send a report. But I'll tell you now, it's not going to work because it's full up. And like I said, this isn't really a problem that can just be fixed like that with a bit of code. Cheating is always going to be a big problem on all manner of games, and Orobot having as many members as it is, it's going to be a thing, and I don't think anyone can expect them to remove all the cheaters. It's not going to happen. But I do think that some extra effort could go into that area, because at the moment, the percentage of cheaters to not cheaters is really not great, and I would not be surprised if it was something like 50% of people on Orobot are cheating. Maybe that's a bit of an over-exaggeration, but I wouldn't be surprised. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my long list of things that are probably broken about Orobot. Maybe there was a few that you didn't think about in the past, maybe there was a few that you did, and maybe there's a few things that you'll think about in the future, perhaps that you can use for your own benefit as well in your grinding. Either way, I'll be leaving this video here. Bye!